E3, 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 E3. So let's start with Square Enix. Because I wasn't expecting Capcom to come through anyway. They're pretty good at letting us down for the last five years. That's expected. Mind me, I'll have them at my funeral so they can let me down one more time. Square Enix spent like 20 minutes showing us Guardian of the Galaxy. And nobody cares. The game looks okay. It, look, it looks much better than Marvel Avengers. But you, I, now I was trying to think about why they would have this game shown again, considering how much of a dismal failure Marvel Avengers were. And I was thinking to myself, maybe it was in the contract that they didn't wouldn't just do Marvel Avengers, but they would also do Galaxy of the Guardians, maybe another game. That's the only logical reason I could think of as to why they would spend 20 minutes showing a game that the majority of their fans don't care about. And let me be honest, as a Capcom fan who grew up on Versus games, I love Square Enix, but I would much rather see a Marvel game back in Capcom's hands done anime style like it was back in the 90s. That's number one. But number two, Square Enix is not doing a better job than Capcom did with the characters. And uh, it caused them a lot of money. So I don't know why they don't get out of this deal. I don't know what, what's happening, but nobody wanted to see 20 minutes of Guardian of the Galaxy at all. And the action looked subpar. Uh, that, that was our blessing. Um, but that's the only thing I can think of as to why do we keep doing that. Talked about the Black Panther DLC, and I'm definitely 100% Wakanda forever, but I'm not buying this game. And I'm definitely not buying DLC to this whack game because, again, the action looked subpar. Life is Strange. You know, I'm not a big channel. And even if I was, I'd probably still say it. But I am not buying video games to practice empathy. <laughs> I am buying video games to get away from the lack of empathy and the lack of kindness that the world offers us gamers many of the times. Why would I want to play? Why, why, why would I want to practice? Why would my superpower be kindness looking into other people's thoughts? What's interesting about that? I mean, why? No one cares. No one cares at all. The big topic of the day, though. Well, before I get to the big topic, let's talk about the Pixel Remaster. I guess I'm kind of lucky because I am a Steam owner. I know you uh, console players typically enjoy <laughs> getting the exclusives. But... Uh, we got the exclusive this time. And we get to play the original Final Fantasies, which is something I wanted to do. I didn't think I would, so I'm looking forward to that, actually. Uh, it just sucks that it's not coming to consoles for most console gamers. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, Strangers of Paradise. Yo, what was up with dude's face? You started to see this crazy trend in Street Fighter V where... Developers are making characters look crazy, but what was wrong with the face of this main character? It's like he wants to look gruffy, but he kind of looks crazy, but mild crazy. It's uh, it's not it's not a good look. I would prefer him to be. I was actually looking at Chaos or Garland, the, the main villain. I was hoping that he was going to be the hero because he looks much more interesting than the crazy guy. Maybe had our uh, our token black fellow there. Why not when I have a token Asian person? Maybe they do it and, and, and see. But, um, yeah. It, it just doesn't look good. Would I play it? Maybe if it wasn't for... I bet you that won't be an exclusive. I bet you 5 to $10. That's all I have. Uh, I bet you 5 to $10 that that will not be an exclusive because no one wants to play PlayStation 2 slash early PlayStation 3 graphic looking games 
in 2021 and 2022 after spending outrageous amounts of money on an exclusive PlayStation 5. That is just not going to work. Um, it looks interesting if they get a new character, if they update the graphics. So overall, this, this was one of the biggest letdowns. It was a bigger one. It was like the... It was, it was almost as if the developers of these games... It was almost as if the developers of these games were trying to outdo the, each other in disappointing us. And wow, the last one definitely did. Before we get to that, though, let's, let's talk briefly. Let's talk about the Capcom one. Number one, no one realistically expected any fighting games. If you love Resident Evil, I guess this was good. I hear the original game was kind of short, but for the most part, people were pretty happy with it. Um, the Monster Hunter series, new stuff is what it is, but I think a lot of the core fans, especially if you're a fighting game fan, you if you had any sense, you weren't expecting Street Fighter VI, or especially not a Marvel vs. game. And um, if you were expecting any new fighting game, you should see a shrink. Yeah. And, uh... Monster Hunter Rise. What else did they have? Resident Evil. The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. How many of you care about playing a lawyer? Right. Me neither. Of course, that's going to be released on PS4, Switch, and Steam. See, they, they, it's, it's just disrespectful. You do know, from now on... How to rate a game. You can rate a game. Whether it's good or not. As if it's released on all platforms. Most of the time. Street Fighter 6 is supposed to be coming out for all platforms. But the main reason Capcom show was not disappointing. Was because Capcom has repeatedly set the bar so low. That there was no room for disappointment. That's the main reason why we weren't disappointed by it. Now, let's go to the biggest disappointment of the night. The Nintendo show was good. For those who wanted to look at that, for what I understand, and I see the little I saw, I was hyped about the Kazuya trailer. I just wish that Smash Brothers was made by Arc System or Capcom. Because the variety of characters they have would make for a really good fighting game if it was actually a fighting game. I probably lost millions of subscribers behind that, but maybe some people won't hear this anyway. Bye, but, now for the biggest disappointment of the evening. And without fail, the biggest letdown. I had the most hype. I thought it was going to come all way and blow everything away was Bandai Namco. They literally showed one game. And I spent like 30 minutes because I kept thinking. I went from stream to stream to stream to stream to stream. Because I thought that for some reason, I lost... Or didn't have the right connection. But they really only show one game. Now, when you think about Bandai Namco, do you think about horror games? Or do you think about anime games? Fighting games? So, why would you show your audience a realistic horror game knowing that most of your... One guy was covering it said, I didn't even know this was a, a Bandai Namco game. Because we don't want realistic horror games. When we think Bandai Namco, we think... Anime games, but they didn't show us to me anime games besides Scarlet, I guess. The House of Ashes, there was the pre show. I think it showed Tales of Arise and Scarlet Nexus, which are fine, but we've, we've been receiving updates about that for a while now, about both games. And, uh, yeah, Bandai Namco. There are all these talks about rumors of Fighter Z and My Hero Academia. Um, in My Hero Academia, Fighters, and Naruto Fighters. I didn't think my Naruto Fighters was a chance. My Hero Academia, I could kind of see it. Or just some new game in general. You know, nothing. And Bandai Namco literally, I guess because Bandai Namco has right now some of the greatest potential for giving us good games. That's why they were them let down. But between Square Enix and Bandai Namco... Those were the two biggest disappointments, and I gotta say that uh, Bandai Namco 
just completely said F it. And to think that these developers paid money to, to watch this. This is DeepMind 255 out.